This project is sponsored by TVLiftCabinet.com. And if you want to know more about the lift that I used in the project, click on the link in the description. If you want to build this cabinet, I'll have step-by-step -step plans that you can find on my website. I got started on this project by first building a plywood box and eventually I'll dress the box up and make it look nice but I wanted to build the box and install the lift just to see how it works and what I've realized is I want to pad the lift out about two and a quarter inches and that way the TV will rise out of the cabinet closer to the center. So the next step is to take everything out, I'll build a little tray that's two and a quarter inches deep, attach it to the back of the cabinet, then I'll reinstall the mechanism make sure I like the way it works, and then I can get back to work on the cabinet. I'm also padding out where I'll attach the manual up and down switch and I'll have all of these measurements on the cut list that you can find on my website. Now I'm going to install the lift and I'll drop the lift on these two pins. Now we're looking at the top of the lift and I'll use a thumb screw to hold the lift in place. You can level the lift by loosening the thumb screw and adjusting the Allen keys on each side. So now I'll give it a quick test and I think that looks pretty good. So now I can remove the lift and start working on the cabinet. To dress up the cabinet, I'm going to add face frames to the sides and back and then I'll add molding on the insides of the face frame. I've already milled the material for the face frames on the sides of the cabinet and I'll put the face frames together using the Craig jig. Now I'm attaching the face frames to the sides of the cabinet using wood glue and inch and a quarter nails in the nail gun. I'm making sure to keep the face frame flush at the top and on the sides. I've already made the face frames for the back and the front of the cabinet and for the back of the cabinet, I'm attaching the face frame again with wood glue and inch and a quarter nails and a nail gun. I made the face frames for the front and the back a little bit heavy, which gives me a lip on both sides of the cabinet. It's better to have the face frames heavy than light, and I'll clean up this lip 
with a flush cut bit in the router. For the front of the cabinet, I'm going to attach the face ring with wood glue and inch and a quarter screws. And I just finished marking out where I'll need to drill and countersink holes. I'll use the nail gun to tack the face ring in place and that will keep it from moving around while I screw it to the cabinet. I've let the glue sit up for about an hour and now I'm using a dovetail bit in the router to cut the plugs. And I generally will cut the plugs about an eighth of an inch heavy and then I'll readjust the router and come back and cut them almost flush. The reason why I don't cut them flush the first time is sometimes they can break off below the surface of the face frame. Last night before I called it a day, I sanded the cabinet on all four sides and now I'm going to trim out the flat panels. I'm using two pieces of molding, a piece of bead molding, and if you want to see how I made this bead molding, click the link right here. And now I'm going to make the tapered molding. This morning I ripped a few boards at an inch and a quarter. Now I'm going to change the angle of my table saw blade and make the tapered molding. To make the tapered molding, I'm starting with three quarters of an inch by an inch and a quarter. I've set the fence at 7 16 and the angle of the blade at 10 degrees. I wanted to point out that I just added a new sacrificial fence to the chop saw and that's going to make getting nice tight miters a lot easier. Now that all the moldings made and I've added a new fence to the saw, I'm ready to start trimming out the cabinet. On the front of the cabinet, I'll just be attaching the bead molding and I'll be hanging doors on the front of the cabinet and I want to make sure that the screws from the hinges don't hit the nails that I'm using to attach the molding. So I've drawn lines on this stick that indicate roughly where the hinges will be and I'll transfer those lines from the stick to the face frame and make sure I avoid this area when I'm nailing the molding to the cabinet.
The bead molding is attached to the face frame with the back of the bead molding flush with the back of the face frame. Now I'm going to use the same bead molding for the bottom of the face frame and this will wrap around the cabinet and once the whole cabinet's finished being painted, I'll add a Sapili kick plate that will also wrap around the bottom of the cabinet. I just finished making the face frames for the doors and I'm going to cut in the mortise and I made this jig that makes cutting the mortise very easy. You simply clamp the jig to the door, keeping the edge of the jig flush with the edge of the door. Clamp, did I say clamp it already? I think I did. And then you use a straight pit in the router to cut out your mortise. Then slide the jig to the other end of the door, clamp it to the face frame and cut out the second mortise. You have to go real slow with the mortise or you'll end up with a tear out over here. I do have a little bit of a tear over here, but you won't see that once the door is completed. Let me show you what the tear out looks like. This is the first mortise that I cut and you can see I've got a tear out and I'll repair that with wood glue and a squeeze clamp. You really need to take your time when you're cutting out the mortise. You may even want to score the cut first with a razor knife. When I'm fitting the cabinet doors, I use steel screws, and once the cabinet's finished and I put it together, I'll use brass screws. Well, that's about as much as I'm going to get done this week. I will be making the Sapili top next week along with the Sapili kick plate. So I hope you'll tune in for that. And I will have a drawing with a cut list. I'll make sure it's step by step because this is a little bit of a complicated build. And I'll have that on my website by Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Just finished marking out where I'm going to drill and countersink holes for the screws. I just finished marking out where I'm now going to drill and countersink screws for holes for the screws.